Okay, we got everybody in here. So, what do we normally do on Tuesdays? Tech Tuesday, Center. Tech Tuesdays, right? So, what did we miss yesterday? Tech Tuesday. We missed an opportunity, right? So, Tech Tuesday is probably one of our most important puddles we can have during the week. And why? Why do you think that is? Knowledge share, share knowledge. Knowledge share, right? Knowledge share amongst your peers from supervisor or from manager, but mostly it's amongst your peers. So to help you identify problems, di diagnose problems, and how one or more than one of you have fixed them. So if somebody else runs across it, they're not chasing their tail. They already know what kind of things that you found. And they can also identify what you fixed on trucks, so if the problem should arise again, potentially they can go back to that, to that same root cause. So. With that being said, we missed yesterday's Tech Tuesday. And it's too important to miss, so we're going to turn it into Tech Tuesday today, even though it's Wednesday. So, Randy, you're just going to get to sit back and listen, kind of take it all in, right? So day three, you'll get to experience what Tech Tuesday is. It's it's kind of new to us, we're trying to roll it out, uh, trying to make sure everybody stays engaged and learns as much as they possibly can. So, go ahead, Victor. What do you got for us this week? Uh, you got an extra day to think about it, so. <laughs> well, um, on the valve stands, if there's no flow through cap, sometimes they're hard to put back on there. Take that wire brush and just clean off the threads, put that new flow through cap on there. On outside or inside? Both. Don't is, there, is there any tricks to put an inside flow yes. through cap on? Take a piece of, yeah, the little blue coolant hose, I guess. Put you a little section about yay long. Stick I have no it. idea how to do it. Can you explain that to me? Okay, so stick the flow through cap into the one end of the coolant hose. Okay. And you just. Yeah, right. This length. Okay. <laughs> stick the flow through cap in here and just stick it in and find the valve stem and twist it on here. And it'll let you tighten it up all the way and just pull it off of there. Perfect. How much time does that save you? A lot of time, because uh, usually if they don't have the flow through caps on there anyway. Sometimes the valve stems get clogged open, or just you can't get a reading and it messes it up. Very good, Patrick. What do you got? On uh, some of our old Peterbilt diesels with the regen systems <coughs> coming out of the def pump, there's a little strainer filter, and uh, it's real hard to. If you didn't know it was there already, you wouldn't know it was in there. You just pick it out with a pick, rinse it out, blow it out with some air, and it's usually full of crud. So we've well, had, that helps. Uh, so what's happening with the with that little depth filter? The stone codes running a regen because the, it's not getting enough depth. So. Uh, so you find a trash in there, or you finding the depth crystallized in there, or it's trash? Okay. Troy, what you got? I just don't want pin yells. I know it's me and we're checking under the engine. Can't hear that good, you know, with the engine over. I might want to lock the truck, man, and see if you got a new one man by the fan clutch. You know, where you can tell us if the truck's on the engine. Have you found it? Yeah. Did you fix them? No, that's a good. When'd you find that? I was in the service and I didn't hear no Billy, Billy hit and then he found it with the key on it. Because, you know, I had a locked out bag out. That's good information to pass on to uh, to the third shift too. Jeremy, enlighten us. Oh man, I got so many. Oh, uh, which one did you pick? Chop saw. Mm -hmm. Using the chop saw. If you bear down on our chop saw, since it is a fiber disc, and you overheat that metal, you are crystallizing the metal. Meaning, once you try to prep and weld to it, you are not going to get a good penetration on weld in the line. Okay. okay. So, to fix the mess up, and I'm going to say your mess up, to fix the mess up, either you can try to slide the metal down just a little bit, do a nice, slow, even cut, just shave a little bit off, prep it by taking a grinder, just barely feathering it out, and take a file. And once you do it, you put it in there, turn your voltage up just a little bit, concentrate more heat on the piece of metal that you overheated, and wash it onto that. 
I think I lost Steve. What else could we do to fix that problem? Knock her down on the chop saw. Get a different chop saw. Different chop saw. Right? It's on the wish list. Sure. It's probably going to happen. But it's a good, good piece of knowledge to bring to it. So that's probably one thing we need to identify and get fixed. One of the first things, right? Well, there's other things we need to identify <coughs> along with the chop saw. Okay. Mike, what do you got? On the uh, McNeilis front end loader, if you're having an issue with the uh, speed up, like when you push the extend on the blade, the engine should speed up. If it's not doing it, there is a relay on the bulkhead underneath the computer box on the left side of the truck. And that relay controls the speed up on the gear belts. Okay. The other ones, they should have one somewhere on the truck, but I'm not sure it's in the same location. Well, the max, on the max it'll be different. Yeah. Okay. Definitely on the Peterbilt switch right there on the left side of the bulkhead. Okay. And Corda McNeil said it can cause surgeon, which is what we're dealing with on the 87. I've already checked the relay, it appears to be okay. But we also can't get to do it right now either. Okay. Trevor, what you got? On the roll off trucks, some of them, I know a lot of them will have problems with the bottom fitting on the foot valves leaking air a lot, um, just kind of a, make it quicker to change out. There's some that you can't get to that access panel on the inside because the rubber matting covers it up. If you go to the driver's side, take off that, your bottom fender plastic piece that has your little marker light in it, just take that plastic piece off and you can actually get your arm and everything up in there, change the fitting a lot quicker, trying to fight around underneath the cab and whatnot. How much time do you think you save by doing that? Uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes is huge, right? Yeah. And you're not fighting. So. Randy, we're going to give you a pass this, this week. We're going to get you prepped for the next one, okay? I got something. Okay. I to it. Perfect. So the other day, uh, Patrick was trying to change the brake pedal out on 521. I noticed he had, so the pins were rusted, frozen there. I noticed he had some pliers and whatnot. Channel from White Scripts trying to get it broke loose. Years ago, I bought one of these. Here, take one of those passes around. That's a little, uh, little bitty six inch snap on pipe wrench. And if you don't have one of those, think about buying one. That is one of the handiest little tools I've ever bought. Uh, ever bought, excuse me. And they are uh, unbelievably tough and bite hard and almost indestructible. Yep, little bitty thing. But that, that dude is some kind of handy. So like, if you put a pair of vice grips on that pin and try to turn it, they were slipping off, that little pipe wrench will bite on you. So just something to think about, they're, they're pretty handy. Okay, so everybody got their chance to speak, right? So what do we, what do we think collectively as a group? What's one of the key, what's one of the key points we'll walk away with today? Who, who thought, whose nugget was the best, so to speak? Uh, region problem. Patrick talked about the death filter being clogged up. That's a big one on, on two of them, 476 and 467, right? Yeah. We've been faced with that one before. Um, so that's huge knowledge to share. Any other ones that really stand out to anybody that were, that were kind of eye opening? I think Troy had a good idea because um, that is something that we're kind of starting to see a little bit of is leaking fan. Uh, Line. Some yeah. so we some you know when we got the tab on we have it locked out. We don't have the power on it, you know, so it's not a light and hip don't do it. Okay. You're not gonna detect it unless it's a bad leak and you have the cab open. Okay. Well good. Alright, so taking a look at yesterday, we're gonna go through this real quick, right? Because obviously we did our knowledge here already. So taking a look at yesterday, a bunch of CSIs up on the board, right? When I take a look at this one, Mike, give me one that stands out to you. Trash behind the blade. Trash behind the blade. So a good one, right? Yeah. So that ended up tearing out wires out of a proc switch, right? We bought that up in the, in the district hole this morning. We had a conversation with the route manager. The route manager is going to go back and he's going to talk to the driver and, and have some coaching conversations with him. It's a newer driver, so it's going to show him the importance of cleaning behind a blade 
and the cause of downtime, how, how that affects his day. All right? Mm, Jeremy, pick out another one that stands out. 548 marker alert. 548 marker alert. Why does that stick out to you? Why was it not rolled up? Right? So perfect. Down in yard. Right? So bingo. Right there. Down in yard. Should have 100% been written up. Who worked on that? Anybody in here or was that third shift that worked on? What's that? Chris. So Chris from third shift, but I got a little background information the marker light was actually missing. So therefore we know for a fact that he did not see that. Okay? Alright. I'm going to pick out one more. The biggest one that stands out to me is right here. Hey, one more thing. Did Go ahead. 48 not come through the CSL or the, the he, lane yesterday? He did. He did. This is from yesterday. So it would have been from the day, you know what I'm saying? How the data transfer. That's right, it was this morning. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm trying to. This one right here sticks out the most to me. Why would that stick out the most to me? Brand new, Brand new truck, right? Yeah, so this is probably, it's at least the third, if not the fourth one that we found from different lines, everything from packet cylinder lines to, to random different hydraulic lines. So I think even those quick connects were loose on it as well. We already went through, if I'm not mistaken, we went through that plate check every line in there. I think the line come loose yesterday morning, whatever day it was. I guess my days are mixed up. So yeah, what uh, what line was? Honestly, I don't know. He said Mike said it was several of them. Well, yeah. yeah, I know he put several several gallons in it, like enough to where I had to bring it back in and take something back out of it. But they were behind a cover plate or something. It wasn't something that was just sticking out. Okay, and that's the one that you fought with. We had to pull that access panel off. So I actually got a random phone call this morning from Jared from Hal calling me to ask me, one, how the training went, right? And I told him the consensus among everybody was the training was, was very informative. I, I thought he did a great job. I, I thought he was very knowledgeable. I thought he spoke well. Um, he didn't come in here like an engineer and, and speak down to any, everybody. So I think, I think it, was a, it was definitely a win for us to get that training. But then he asked about the truck. He said, well, how do you like the truck? I told him, honestly, the truck was built on a Friday or a Monday. He said, well, what do you mean? I said, we've had more door traffic out of that thing and trying to run it. How many days we tried to run that truck? Four or five? We run two days in the first month. Yeah. So I, I expressed my concerns as far as that goes. He wants to get somebody out here uh, to go over that whole truck with us and obviously them take the time to, to work on that truck and make sure everything's tight. Uh, they also want to send an engineer out to do a ride along with Robbie, which I think will be informative to him. Um, that will get, and they want to do it from beginning of route to end of route. So it'll be able to walk him through any uh, problems he encounters while he's out on his route. So I think that's a total win for, for everybody. So look for that probably in the next two weeks. He's going to shoot me an email. So, so far the customer support out of Powell has, has been pretty good. So we'll, we'll take it from there and we'll just keep an eye on it and obviously pay extra particular attention to that truck when we go ahead and PM that truck to try to stick a wrench on, on everything. Um, well, if you have issues, you gave me that phone number for calling them mm -hmm. okay, Monday to Friday. Yeah, that's, that's the, yeah, they only, they work banker hours, yeah. so that's the trouble. But they are helpful. Yes. So we'll help with so. All right, that's all I got for today. Anybody got anything to add? All right, we got plenty of work to do, so let's go get at it.